welcome to my channel notes in the sewing room my name is becky thank you for joining me today today's video is all about what i made during the month of april i know i'm a little bit late posting this video but basically i've just got around to filming it so that's the way that it is unfortunately at the moment i'm just a little bit busy and i've just got to fit these things in when i can but i hope you enjoy watching today and i've got a few different things to show you i've got a matching set which i'm really excited about so that's a top and a skirt i've got an upcycling project which was a skirt and now it's a top so that's quite exciting i've got something that i made for my little boy and towards the end of the video i'm also going to be giving you a little bit of an update on how i'm getting on with my house renovations if you are interested in that i know a few of you were when i mentioned it before so stay tuned and i'll go into everything i've made and mention all the patterns and fabrics etc and of course i will put all the details down below in the description box if you want to check that out don't forget if you do enjoy watching today i would love it if you could give me a thumbs up leave me any comments you would like to below ask me any questions or whatnot i do love to have a chat to you in the comments section and of course subscribe to my channel if you haven't already thank you of course to everyone who has subscribed already and who does leave likes and comments and stuff i really really appreciate it so let's get to it and i'll tell you what i made in april so the first thing that i made in april was one of my absolute favorite top patterns and that's a woven top pattern and it's the sagebrush top by friday pattern company so i really really love this top it's available in sizes extra small through to 7x i made mine in a size small so my measurements are 32 bust, 28 waist, and about a 40 hip. I say about, because you know, these things fluctuate a little bit, but <laughs> uh, it's normally about a 40 hip. So uh, yes, I love, love, love this pattern. I'm showing you on my iPad just because I've got it there to hand basically. So I started off with a skirt, which I, I picked up from a vintage shop in a view of, with a view of upcycling it. And it's a kind of chiffon type skirt, or it was a chiffon type skirt. I'm going to put in a little video of what the skirt looked like before and, of course, what the top look like, looks like now as well. It was an elastic waist skirt, so it got a chiffon outer layer and then it got a lightweight kind of lining fabric on the inside. But I wanted to make the most of all of that and use as, as much of it as I could to make my new outfit. So what I decided to do is I used the outer part of the skirt to make the main part of the top and then I used the inside of the skirt just to make a little bit of a lining for the main part of the bodice. That's just because I didn't want my top to be see-through. So let me just grab it and I'll show you it. Here is my top. So I absolutely love it. One of the things I love about the sagebrush top, if you've not tried it already, is that you can actually make your own adaptations and make it different depending on what fabric you use. Um, you know, if you decide to include the ruffle or not. So I've made a version where I didn't include the ruffle and that looks really cute as well. So you've got these gorgeous sleeves, but you know, you have got the option, I guess, where you could miss out the elastic at the bottom of the sleeve there and maybe just have it a bit looser. Um, I decided this time not to put the bias binding around the neck. Um, in the pattern instructions, you're supposed to have a bias binding that goes around the neckline and it's supposed to finish in a bow at the back of the neck. But instead of that, I've literally overlocked the top of my top, I've folded it over a couple of times, and then I've actually just created a little loop out of the same fabric for the back, and I've actually just added on a little button there. Um, mainly because I had limited fabric, but also I kind of like that as well. I think it looks quite nice at the back. And completely coincidentally, I had a button that was pretty much the same color as the fabric, so that was a big win for me. Um, but yes, so I'm really pleased with how this worked out. Um, it's perhaps not that neat on the inside, but it is. it does look nice on the outside, I think anyway. Um, because I was using a skirt and turning it into a top, and obviously I didn't have endless amounts of fabric, um, this has perhaps come up a little bit shorter on me than I would have preferred, but it's still absolutely fine and tucks into a high-waisted skirt, no problem. And I'm, I'm really pleased with the fit of it and everything. So that's really good. Um, I think this is probably... Oh, uh, the third or fourth version of this sagebrush that I've made so far. Um, and I think it's definitely the first version that I've made in a chiffon. I, I very rarely work with this kind of lightweight fabric. I'm normally put off by it because it's kind of a bit see-through and I think, how's it going to work? Um, but for this version, you can see that I've got the single layer chiffon for the arms. You can just see my hand through there a little bit. Um, but I think that works well. I've doubled over the chiffon to create the ruffle at the front there. Um, this section at the top is a single layer uh, of fabric. 
and then um, basically from underneath the ruffle all the way down to the bottom of the hemline I've actually added in the original lining so you can just see that just in there um, and then of course I, I hemmed those pieces separately um, but I love this fabric I, I love anything with spots on kind of polka dots are one of my favorite things to wear so I'm pleased with just yeah how, how this worked out um, as I said I'm going to put in a video and a little picture of me actually wearing the top so you can check out the fit and whatnot but if you haven't tried this top by Friday Pattern Company I definitely recommend it. It's one that you can wear in the daytime or you could wear it, you know, if you're going out in the evening dressed up with a pair of trousers or a skirt and some heels um, or some Converse. I mainly wear my things with Converse. It's just comfortable. And to be honest, I very rarely go anywhere that's like dressed up. So normally trainers are fine. I have got plenty of shoes. I have got lots of nice shoes actually, but very rarely these days have the opportunity to wear them. But Hey ho, that's the way that it is. But I love a nice top and um, looks nice with one of my various skirts. So uh, I definitely recommend upcycling if you haven't tried it already. It's such a good way to use up things that you've already got in your wardrobe, or you you could of course use a I don't know, something like a bedspread or a tablecloth or something that someone gives you to upcycle. Turn a pair of trousers into some shorts. Don't be put off and sort of think, oh no, I can't do that. Just have a go, you know. I think it's so nice to give something a new um, lease of life. You know, this this was a skirt that, um, you know, I picked up really cheaply for, from um, a vintage shop and, you know, probably someone else had given it to, to that shop and they were selling it on. And I just, for me, I just wanted to give it that new sort of, bit of sparkle so something that I was really going to enjoy wearing and I definitely think I'm going to enjoy wearing that so yes that's item number one on my April makes list. The second thing that I made in April is actually a matching set so I've actually got two things here to show you so these were both made out of some fabric so a viscose fabric that I got from a So Haley Jane subscription box so this is a gorgeous fabric and just hold it up there so it's got little tiny kind of splatter sort of prints all over it. It's not not really spots, but um well maybe it's a sort of animal type print. I don't know, whatever you, whatever you what you, your interpretation is of it to be honest. But um yes it's a really really nice fabric. As soon as I opened my subscription box I was like wow that fabric's amazing I couldn't wait to use it. So I wanted to turn it into a matching set. So basically when I've got this outfit on it could look like a dress but of course they are separate so I can wear the top with a different skirt or I can wear the skirt with a different top. But together, they look fabulous as well. So I'm really pleased with how these worked out. So I'm gonna tell you about each of the items individually. So the first one I'll tell you about is the top. So I've actually used the Tilly the Buttons Stevie pattern to make this. So it's it's an old pattern. It's been out for quite a while. As you can see, my pattern envelope is a little bit on the battered side. Um, but the thing about this top is because it's got grown on sleeves, you can make it obviously as a dress as well if you prefer, um, but you have got the option to make it as a top. If I just hold up the line drawing at the back there, you'd be able to see. So I've actually um, experimented with mine and it's actually fine to wear this way round or this way round because it's got grown on sleeves I don't think it really matters you feel comfortable well I feel comfortable anyway if I've got the bow tie at the front of the top or if I've got the bow tie at the back so I think that's really cool and it makes the, the top a little bit extra versatile and you know you can get different looks depending on what you're going for on that particular day I am going to be putting in some video footage of me wearing this top with a skirt and of me wearing this with the actual matching skirt as well so you can see what they actually look like um but i'm really pleased with the fit of this i made this in a tilly in the button size three um it's got some nice details if you haven't tried this top already it's got some cuffs on here so you don't have to do any hemming or anything like that it's finished with a facing just around the neck uh, this is actually a pattern that i'd kind of forgotten about and it was only when i was going through my pattern stash thinking oh what top can I use to actually match the skirt that I was planning and I thought oh yeah the Stevie I'd forgotten about that um, but I love how it's got this little tie on the back so obviously you can wear that um, in a bow tie oops it's falling off the hanger um, or you could wear it hanging loose you know whatever you fancy you tie it in a knot I don't know whatever you wanted to do um, I tend to wear mine in a bow and I really like that um, but I like how the facing just comes all the way down here um, down that kind of V section and it just gives it a really nice clean professional looking finish so yes that's the stevie top so to match that I've actually made a skirt 
as I mentioned. Um, and I've actually added in one of my little rosy cheeks um, labels at the back there as well, which is quite cool. So I decided to make this gorgeous skirt, which was the Ella skirt by Forget Me Not Patterns. So in the pattern pack, um, it's actually supposed to have a zip at the back, but they recently released a blog which shows you how to create an elastic waistband instead, or, um, well, there's actually two different options. So you could create the elastic all the way around like I have here, uh, which is super comfortable and just gives me a really good fit on the skirt, or you could go for the other option, which was a flat waist at the front and then the elastic at the back. Um, so either, either or, I think you've got some nice options there that you can you can try. Um, this skirt is available in a couple of different lengths. I've actually gone for the kind of midi length, um, which has got this gorgeous ruffle all the way around the bottom. Um, and I just love that. I just think it's a really nice, pretty detail to add on there. Um, I actually struggled for fabric. I've got two and a half meters of fabric and obviously I wanted to get the top and the skirt out of the two and a half meters. So for the ruffle, I've actually had to um, create a, an extra join in the fabric, but because the fabric's quite busy, I don't think you can really tell that I've created a join. So that's absolutely fine. I just wanted to make the most of every single scrap of fabric that I got there. And um, because I just hate kind of throwing things away, you know, and just having various scraps of fabric around and I'm not going to do anything with them a lot of the time. So I just, I would rather use them as part of the project. So the fact that I got this whole outfit out of my two and a half meters, I was really, really pleased. Um, so yeah, that's the skirt. It's got a bit of a high, low hem type thing going on. Um, and yeah, I just love that it's got the elastic waist. Um, I got a better fit the second time round with the elastic to what I did with the original waistband. I made um, a version in red, which was also actually a matching set, which had got the original waistband and I finished that one with an invisible zip at the back. But for me, I don't know, it was okay, but I don't know, it just wasn't like the perfect fit. Whereas I feel like with the elastic, I was able to kind of pull it up and get the right fit for me. And it just makes it extra comfortable, to be honest, for just jobbing about and doing whatever I want to in the skirt. But this is definitely a skirt and top, to be honest, that you can dress up or down depending on what you're doing. Um, so yes, if you haven't tried this pattern either, I would definitely give it a go. Both the Stevie top and the Ella skirt, I would say are suitable for beginners. Um, or of course, if you are a more experienced sewer, you're gonna get these things done in no time at all. Or if you're like me, I tend to do sort of 10 minutes sewing here, 20 minutes there. And then before you know it, the actual project comes together quite nicely. Um, I'm quite, you know, a busy person as I'm sure you are as well. You know, I've got a, a little boy and I work and, you know, we're doing house renovations, so it can be quite difficult to fit in my sewing time. But actually, I do love sewing. So to fit in 10 minutes or 20 minutes here and there is amazing. And that's kind of my little bit of time, my little bit of kind of heaven. So it's, um, you know, it, it's just lovely to have that creative time to myself so yeah i definitely recommend it um if you haven't tried these patterns or if you are new to sewing you think oh no i've not got the time you know just squeeze in a little bit of sewing before dinner or after dinner or just before you go to bed or first thing when you get up in the morning whenever is best for you squeeze in that time and i'm sure before you know it you're gonna have a whole project finished and you'll just think wow how have i done that in the time that i've got so the next project that i wanted to share with you today is actually one that i made for my little boy so um as you'll probably know if you are a regular viewer my little boy is one and um well he'll soon be two actually he's two in september i can't believe the time it's just flying by um but i love to make things for him and one of the patterns that i've really enjoyed making recently has been the poppy jazz dandelion dungarees so this pattern is available from newborn all the way up to 24 months and it's actually supposed to have a full lining in there um but obviously we're kind of in summer now and i wanted to make something that was a you know he was going to be able to wear you know in the warmer weather not that it's actually very warm today when i'm filming this video but you know it it's nice to have the option to wear it either with a layer underneath or, you know, with just a light t-shirt under or something if, if the weather is nice and warm. So I decided to do a little bit of a hack. So rather than doing the full lining, I've actually created just a little facing to go on the inside. So that basically covers the straps and the top of the dungarees. And then rather than having the lining, obviously at the bottom, I've actually created some little cuffs just to go on the ankles. And I'm so pleased um, with this hack. I think it works really, really well. So let me show you what I've made. So this is the second time that I've tried this hack for William. And 
he just looks so cute in it. I'm going to put in a little picture of him wearing this outfit. So I've actually used a cotton jersey to make this. So it's actually got little whales all over it. So if you can see that fabric, there, it's super cute. And I've used some bright yellow buttons, which I bought from my local market. So you've got the option with this project to put on poppers, I guess, at the top, or you can put buttons on there as well. I've sewn on the buttons really, really well, so you can't hopefully pull them off. Um, so you can actually put on one button or two buttons or one popper or two poppers, depending on what you want to do. I decided to add on two buttons, which basically means that we've got the option, depending on how tall William is at the time of wearing these, um, to extend the straps or not. So if I just show you, if I do it up on the next button up, it just makes the strap a little bit on the shorter side. Um, or if you've got the longer one, that's what it looks like on that side. So yeah, it's really nice. So I'll show you the cuffs at the bottom of the leg. So yeah, that's what the cuffs look like at the bottom of the leg. So um, yes, it's really nice. I'm gonna turn these inside out as well so you can see my facing, just in case you're interested in doing this hack for yourself. Um, it was such a, an easy hack to do. I've, to make the facing, I've literally retraced the top of the dungaree um, and then I've just, added it in following the same instructions to be honest as you would for the lining but the facing is only comes to just underneath where the um, arm sockets finish so yeah you've got probably it finishes about three inches underneath where the arm sockets finish so yeah that's the facing on the inside there you go and of course that goes over the top of the straps as well. Yes, but I'm really, really pleased with this little outfit. He looks super cute in it. Um, <laughs> you'll probably notice that I've actually sewn this up in pink overlocker thread because that's what I've got threaded up at the time and I just couldn't be bothered to re-thread it in white. I probably should have done, but you know, <laughs> I, was, I was just thinking, well, why not? I can use it in pink for my other project that I just showed you as well. So it just saved me that a little bit of extra time of you know, threading it and re-threading it and all that nonsense. If you've made any projects for your children or your friend's children or anything like that, I would love to know what patterns you've used and any that you could recommend for me to have a go at for my little boy. Um, it's always good to have a recommendation. Also, if you have made any of the other patterns that I've mentioned in today's video and you've used different fabrics, bricks or you know you've done some different hacks or anything like that I'd love to know how you did them so just let me know in the comments below that would be amazing so they were all the projects that I've made this month um, but I wanted to give you a little bit of an update also on my house renovations so for those of you who are interested or may already know to be honest if you've watched my, my other videos we move house uh, at the end of January time and We've moved into a 1960s do-a-rupper. So we've had lots and lots of things to do. And in one of my previous videos, I shared with you a little bit of the upstairs and we were pulling off the wallpaper and I showed you some of the vintage carpets we've got in here. A lot of the features of the house are original and we are trying to modernize a little bit with at the same time trying to keep a little bit of the original character of the house um so i'm going to pop in some pictures of what we've been doing most recently so um we had some carpets delivered on thursday last week which to be honest turned out to be a little bit of a stress because we ended up getting the wrong carpet delivered and laid in some of the rooms because the carpet people were here and um you know they thought it was the right one but it was the wrong one but anyway it's part of the same range and as it turns out, we love the carpet and the carpet company were amazing about it. And it was a supplier issue rather than the shop issue and blah, de, blah, de, blah. But anyway, it's worked out well in the end. We've got a new carpet, which is amazing. And it's just really brightened up the whole of the upstairs. So we've got that now in three bedrooms upstairs. And also we've, we've laid a runner carpet, which is on the stairs, which looks really super smart. Um, it's quite a light carpet. So we, we are trying to be extra careful with any kind of mess, basically going up and down the stairs. But um, yeah, that looks really nice. We've also been working on William's nursery as well, um, or should I say bedroom. Um, so um, he's in a box room. So we didn't have like endless amounts of space to create what we wanted to in there. But what we have done is um, tried to make the most of the space that we've got. So we'd previously upcycled a set of drawers, which were really old, actually. They were from when my husband was little, um, but we've painted those and they look really nice in the room. So we've painted those white. Um, we've also um, got the wallpaper off in that room 
we've tried to sort out the walls and make them as smooth as possible. Then we've actually painted it uh, white at the top and then we've added a sage green colour at the bottom. And we've also created a kind of wavy pattern, which looks really nice. And that was kind of inspired by something that I'd seen on Pinterest. There's so many ideas on Pinterest for children's bedrooms, children's playrooms and that kind of thing. So have a look definitely at those um, kind of inspirational ideas if you are um, thinking about doing um, some renovations of your own at home. Um, but I'm really pleased with the way that the kind of waviness came out. We bought a stencil online um, and yeah, it's just, just works really nicely. Um, and then we've also obviously put William's cot back in there, which is, which is nice. Um, and we've added in a little um, chair as well, which we already have. I say little, it's not a little chair. It's a, a full size chair, um, which was an Ikea wing back chair. So we've actually got a couple of those chairs. We've got one downstairs in the house and one upstairs as well. Um, but it's a really bright mustard color and it just looks really smart. I've also reused um, some curtains that we had in his previous room, which are light blue with uh, big spots on. So I made those curtains out of some uh, fabric that I bought previously from Kath and it was in the sale and we've got a few matching cushions in his room as well uh, which look really nice with with the curtains and the chair and all that stuff so um, and the new carpet went into William's room as well so I'm really pleased with how that room is turning out so far and um, I'm hoping to buy some bits of artwork or make some bits of artwork to go onto the walls in there next so I will give you another update soon on how we're getting on with that um, we've still got loads and loads of stuff to do downstairs um, we recently had a new door delivered so um, that was good. We've had a few bits of double glazing put in because we did have some single glazing before that. Um, so that's hopefully keeping the house a little bit warmer now because it was quite drafty before. Um, but yeah, we've, we've, we've got lots to do. We've still got all the original carpets um, downstairs and um, we've got lots of lots of decorating to do. Uh, at some point we're going to be doing the kitchen and probably last thing on the list maybe is to create new sewing space as well. So I'm really looking forward to when we get a chance to do that because at the moment I'm kind of crammed in on the dining room table and um, yeah it's a little bit of a squeeze to be honest on there um, but yeah so I hope you've enjoyed um, watching today's video learning about my house renovations and seeing a few of the projects that I've made as well um, I'd love to know what you're working on at the moment so do let me know um, what what you're doing whether that's a clothes based project or a craft project or anything like that I'm always looking for ideas and things of things that I could maybe work on in the future as I said if you have enjoyed watching today I would love if you could press that thumbs up button and subscribe if you haven't already uh, but until next time I'll leave it there I've got loads of good content coming up on my channel soon so do keep a watch out for my next video but until then I'll see you soon bye Thank you.